This is DCD 650 Cottage Garden. It's a lovely design with a very full cottage garden which um, has very many layers but we can make it look really neat and tidy with a few simple tips and tricks. As you can see for eight layers that's really not very fat and it looks smart and tidy. This is die cut decoupage so it's very easy to use. You would simply press it from the sheet to use it and layer up each number in turn. If you press it from the sheet you get little lugs but you can insert a craft knife into the groove and then slice down between the layers and you'll get quite a neat cut out layer. It's particularly useful on the first layer. Now if you prefer you can press it from the sheet just like that. It presses quite readily and then you can use a pair of scissors or a craft knife and ruler and then just take off the little lugs afterwards like that. Now if you know how you're going to mount it, while it's flat like this without its layers on, it's really easy to mount onto a, p a panel or whatever you're going to do. You can also do it afterwards but it is very easy at that stage. So now we're going to work on layer 2. We simply press that from the sheet. It is a little bit fiddly and you need to take your time not to tear anything but it's a whole heap better than having to cut everything yourself so I can always keep that in mind when I'm feeling frustrated with it. Then I cut off these little white lugs. Now some people don't notice them, some people don't care about them, it's up to you. I tend to take them off because there will always be one in and an at the end that you're wishing you had. I also take a little bit out of the tree because I don't like the little light bits there, but that's up to you. Now I do this on every layer, take out the little white bits. I'll be doing that bit off camera because once you've seen it once you don't really want to watch it every time. Okay. Now this is a bit of a truncated layer and that's because it will be covered over with the next layer so we don't need the whole layer on it. I like to give the chimney a bit of shape because it is a square chimney so I cut between the chimney and the roof and then place the tweezers along the point that I want to fold at and press the other piece down and then you can see you've got quite a nice little square chimney going on. And I'll do the same for this chimney. So this is a piece um, yes, this is the piece I want to fold down. So we'll cut between the chimney and the roof, tweezers and fold. And it gives a nice little shape. We can flatten them out a bit when they go on, but that starts it going. Okay, I use sticky fixers for mine, and I like to use the small size ones. And we'll place the sticky fixers just along the top edge for this one. Because the bottom edge is going to be covered by the next layer, we don't really want it to bulk up. So I keep the pads just to the top. For the end of the house as well, because the house goes around the corner, I actually would like to give that a bit of a fold. So try not to take it across the building too, and then we'll give it a fold along there. So now the end of the house is actually going around the corner as you would expect. For the chimney, particularly this one, it's a bit narrow, so I cut a pad. I move it away from the main... Um, area of pads, then just press down with the craft knife. You might hear a little pop and then you'll see the two sides come back up and then you know you've cut all the way through the pad. And you can just lift and use in the same way as before. There you 
Okay, the bit that I want folded, I'm not going to pad because we want it to actually drape down to the previous layer. And you'll see the no pads along the bottom either. And that's because we're going to want to glue it. Spare backing. Okay. Then the chimneys are quite important, so line up with your chimneys. And there we go. The lower edge I'm going to glue, so I have a little bit of glue. I use PVA and I've put a little puddle of it on a spare backing sheet from a Sticky Fixers because it's non-stick, it stays on there nicely and it doesn't dry as quickly as it might on real paper. So I put it on a piece of scrap paper, run it underneath there to add glue to the back of it and then you can press down. Now this might um, pop up a couple of times while the glue's drying. All I would do is just press it back down again if I spot it. Okay, so that's layer two. Okay, this is our layer three. So we have the roof part and the top part of the garden. We'll start with the roof. Where the roof um, comes out for the side of the building, I like to give a little cut along the eaves here and then a fold along this line here. So now we can raise this part and fold this part to actually give it the shape that you would expect to see in real life and give a little bend to that end piece. Now I would place sticky fixers along the bottom edge of the roof. We don't want them on the top because we can get a nice slope on the roof. Similarly, where we folded the roof, we want the roof to be going down at this point, so I don't place sticky fixers there, just on the little eaves. And then for the top edge of the roof, we need to glue. And that little knobble bit around the corner. Gluing the top does two things. It gives a nice slope to the roof and it sort of defines the bottom edge of the roof nicely. And then you can see where we've lifted this side and we've let that part of it um, go back down to the previous layer. There we are. I think we've we're all right, but we'll just keep an eye. And if it needs to press down, we'll do it. For this top part of the garden, I like to cut this tree off because I, I want to give it, it should be behind the hedge, the rose hedge for me, and so you can't really do that while it's stuck on. So now I give it a nice curve, top to bottom. Then we can put a sticky fixer on the top edge of the, the tree. And so that the bottom of the tree stays away from the hedge, just dab it in the glue and then place it. And then you can see it gives a nice lift at the top of the tree, but the back bottom of the tree is going to be nicely down so that the hedge stands forward from it. Okay. So now, the top of these flowers, we've got two rows of roses. So for the top row, I try and cut into it and move the, a few of them back to give a little bit of shape and flow. 
seldom in real life do you have a flat row of flowers. So I try to bring that into this. Okay, and if you don't do this, it'll it'll be all right. But I think this makes it look that bit more special. At the end here, cut down between the gate post and the border, and then you can curve the border back and really raise the separation between the fence and the border, which would actually be on the other side of that path. And now we've given it a bit of distance where it might look like it. So something along those lines. It's just that little bit that makes it just stand out a touch. Now die cutting's good but it can't do everything and I don't like this pale green here so I would actually just cut that away. If you're using an aperture that's really not going to even notice but if it's going on a single fold I have to do it. So we'll give it a little curve to shape that tree as well. And there we go. Now the sticky pads are going on the top edge only. Again we've got successive layers and you'll see written on the sheet that we're expecting you to glue the bottom edge of layers uh, two, three, two to six, I think it says. So this little bit here is where we cut. This is the bit that we want to go back, so we don't want to put a pad here. Otherwise, even though we've cut it, we'll have raised it again, which makes a nonsense of your cut. There we are. We've got the little bit of separation that we were looking for here. It's not massive, but it's just enough. And we've got the separation between the tree and the roses that we were looking for as well. So now we need glue along the bottom edge. That might be enough. And then you'll see when we push down on the glue, the effect it has on the top is to push all the top forward like that, giving it a fuller effect, which is sort of what we're looking for. Okay. Layer 4 is a fairly straightforward layer, it's only using a tiny bit of garden. Now for this, again, we're going to be overlapping the bottom edge of the layers, so we don't really need to do much with the bottom edge. For the top edge, I would tend to cut into the flowers a bit and give them just that little bit of shape, natural look. The fence is all right, and then I would come down so we can separate the border from the edge of the fence again. And that, that gives it a kind of nice natural separation between the two. For these tall spikes of flowers, although they're on the next layer, I like to start coming down in between them, introducing a little bit of movement between each spike. And then the next lot kind of makes it fuller and the next lot fuller still. And so along the top edge, we're not doing anything with the 
we're not putting them on the bottom edge because we want that to drape down to the next layer previous layer, sorry this is the cut in the fence we don't actually want to put a pad right near the end but we do want to put one the other side so that raises the fence and gives as much separation between this part and that part as we can get Okay, now this is the back of the steps. Although we want the bottom edge to be low, to be flatter, we actually want to raise the steps to try and give the steps the effect of stepping out, really. So you've got the kind of step effect. So we put a couple of pads just on the steps. So there you can see, it, it kind of keeps the steps up, but lets the rest go back. And now we want glue on either side, so we go down, glue there, glue there. Then we can get a nice tight um, thickness here, but give the steps a little bit of lift. I'll keep coming back to that and give it a press down where it needs it. I think actually that one might want a little bit more glue. That's better, a bit sticky now. Okay, so now we're going to move on to layer 5. So here's our layer 5, it's another simple one with just a band of garden. We're going to, I started cutting, sorry. We're going to cut into these flowers so that we can get a bit of movement along the top edge. It just lets us raise a couple of little bits and let a couple of other bits f um, drop backwards a bit and it just adds some life to it. For these spikes, flower spikes, is I like to go down between each of them again. And the fact that we did it on the last layer and this layer, it kind of multiplies the effect so it actually looks like a fuller um, amount of blooms. Along the top of the step here, I'm going to take that bit a little bit back. This bit is actually on the next layer, so it will be raised off the step there. The very top edge of these pink flowers are not on the next layer, so we'll do a bit of shaping in between them. Seems a very simple thing, but it makes quite a lot of difference to the end result. Just a couple of snips into the flower spikes. 
So not going between those two because I don't actually want to remove it, which that might do if we're not careful. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to put pads on the back. We're keeping them away from the cut edges because basically we've cut all the edges and if you put the pads right close to it, it'll take out the shaping that we've given them. We want the top of the steps to almost fall down against the previous layer so it looks like a continuous set of steps. So I've not put the pads at the top of the steps. Conversely, we want the bottom of the steps to stand out a bit so they raised up for the next layer. So I put the pads at the bottom of these steps. A bit like that. There we go. So the joining the steps hardly notices. It looks a bit like a continuous set of steps, which looks nice. And we've got a nice raised top. So now we want some glue along the bottom edge. So we're gluing along here. And we might be too much gluing. My glue's gone a bit gungy, so it didn't work so well. But there we go, take off some of it. And then we can press it into place. And that keeps the steps raised, but um, takes the garden down at the sides. And you'll find that it raises the top here of all the flowers and really makes them stand out nicely. So layer 6 is another band of garden as you can see and we'll just do the now familiar trimming around the flowers, shape adding. I'm going to come down between these two because I'd like to have a bit of separation between the, do the two plants. And the same, this is on the next layer but we'll give it a little. So we're cutting into the yellow one because it's not on the next layer and the white one is, in case that was a bit confusing. Okay, then a little bit around here. This one is less individual flowers and more about getting something between the plants. So the clumps of plants are separated a little. I'll come down a little into these. I'm going to come down between this couple of leaves here and the step and then we can just give a tiny, we don't want a definite fold but a little bit of a bend on the step, 
help it integrate with the previous one. These ones are coming up on the next layer as well, so we don't have to worry about them. So just a little flow between the pinks. There we go, something like that. And then we're going to do the same as normal here. Along the top edge, but not so much the bottom. Now the front is looking a little bit... I think sallow would be the word for it here. But that will all change when we work the front layers. of the step. This is the last layer of steps so I'm going to give it a bit extra. Give it the three to help support it. I think that's quite a lovely flow on the steps. It actually looks exactly like it should. So then we're going to be working on the corners now. Okay, so this is our layer seven, and it actually now you'll see is split into the two halves. The steps have left out of it. So we'll start with this half, and we'll do the same thing as we've been doing. Keep highlighting these flowers. This is a bit like the flowers, the spiked flowers at the top, just giving them a little bit of a cut between. Let's the stems be able to bend and flow a bit. There is a bit of separation with this at the top, with the next layer as it's on there, but we'll give it a bit of a start here. Then all of this is on the next layer, so we'll leave that alone. And now we've got to the front of the flower bed, we're going to start putting sticky fixes along the bottom too, because we want to start building up these bottom corners. Okay. 
think I might try and take that down a bit. And the other side. Now all of these pale ones are on the next layer, so the work that we need to do is on the top flowers here. We'll start bringing in a little. So that can raise up from that one. Again, this is less individual flower and more bush, right? each individual clump of plants. And keeping an eye on what's on the next layer helps you decide what bit you're going to cut and what you're not. So where we've shaped it and this bit is coming up, we obviously don't want to place the fixer too close to the shaping because we'll knock the shaping out. Oops. And between between these clumps of plants at the top, where like this side we want to come downwards, and this side we side we want to raise. I'm placing the pad close to the side close to the cups so we can raise the bits that we want to and then the other pieces can fall back to the previous layer. There you go. It's starting to fill out the bottom sides now. And with our next layers, it will add to that. And the plants are tumbling over the steps nicely. So now we're moving on to layer eight. Again, with the two separate sides. Trim off the white edges. Okay, the piece that's on the next layer is this piece here. So anything that we want to do, we want to do onto this pale yellow, pale green rather. A couple of little bits in. There's nothing much to do.
and then for this side this little clump here is the bit that's on the next layer so we could play with the top a little That one's quite a nice big leaf, so it's kind of nice to bring that forwards a bit. So while we remember that's the leaf, we we'll pop that on there. Now that gives quite a nice full effect and I think we could stop there, but we didn't. We've got another layer. You, could, you don't have to use every layer, but I think it gives the right effect. It gives a lovely full flower border. And that's what cottage gardens are all about to me. A nice, full, packed full of flowers, borders and beds. There we go. I think that will do quite a nice job. I think this props up the corn nicely. Without this last layer, I think the front corners are just a little bit too low. Whereas with that in there, it looks the right sort of depth. This really doesn't want very much at all, actually. Just a couple of little bits. This piece here that I don't really want to pad out at all because I want to emphasize this leaf here that we've 
cut around. So that just trails down to that layer. We could put a dab of glue on it if you want to. I don't mind it just trailed. So there we go. A really beautiful full effect garden. Not too fat anywhere. And nicely ranged. Hopefully you agree.